Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Ticket to Ride Europe 15th Anniversary Edition. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. All aboard, hop on the train, because we're going to Europe today. We're gonna be going over the entire continent there, and we're gonna be trying to connect cities to cities and going through ferries and over water and going under through tunnels and making big stations. But today we're doing it in the most grandiose version ever. Today we're taking a look at the big giant 15th anniversary of Ticket to Ride Europe. Let me show you uh, all about the components and then I'll show you how big and grandiose this is. And for those that haven't seen Europe before, I'll also describe some of the different mechanisms in this from the original Ticket to Ride. Here we go. Now, most likely what you wanna see the most are the cool looking trains. And here's the five different trains that come in the game for the different five players. So let's take a closer look at them. So for each of these trains, you're gonna see the station on the left side, the train, the scoring marker, and the station from a different angle with the tin that it comes in just behind it. Now I don't actually have the original Ticket to Ride Europe size box, but everything in Ticket to Ride Europe, the original is the same as the Ticket to Ride size wise. So here's the difference between the regular standard Ticket to Ride, it would be Europe, and the 15th anniversary edition so you can see how much larger the box is. And here they are stacked so you can see how much area is actually added to that bigger box. Now speaking of that box, let's look inside. We have the big beautiful board that we'll highlight in just a moment. But when you take this out, we have where all the tins nicely sit, has a spot for all the scoring markers, and you can separate the cards from the regular train cards to the ticket cards and some of the special longer train cards and things like that there. Really nice insert. Let's take a look at the tickets. Now, this is the size from the original Ticket to Ride. Same size that's in the base game for Ticket to Ride Europe. So just to show you the size, how much larger they are in this awesome version. Now, they, it comes with the standard 46 tickets that came with Ticket to Ride Europe. It also came with the 55 tickets that came with the 1912 Europa expansion. It also comes with one of the sort of with Ride with Max cards. It comes with six of the Orient Express, and it comes with uh, 45 of the big cities cards. Now, there's also long tickets in this game. They are colored differently. And depending on the variant that you play, because you can play with just the basic or the basic in 1912, you could play just the big cities, or you could play mega with all of them. But depending, mostly what happens is you'll get some longer tickets dealt to you first, which you can decide to keep or not some of those. And then you'll get the regular tickets. So you're, you're guaranteed to at least get some long tickets, at least one if you really want one. Uh, so that's a little bit different here from the USA version. And there is a card because you still get 10 points for the Euro uh, European Express, the longest train in the game. And speaking of those variants, the rulebook on the back side of the rules does a really good job of summarizing the different variants and how many tickets you start with and how many you have to keep or how many you get later and how many you have to keep. A really good job of summarizing all this here. Now here's a look at the train cards and the different art in them. Again, here is what it looks like from the original version of Ticket to Ride uh, and how much bigger these cards are from here. You can see if I overlap this, definitely a lot bigger. But you can check out the different colors uh, and the different things. Some of them have some cool, you know, some cool artwork on them. This is what the wild locomotive looks like. Now let's take a look at the huge board. I always love it when companies put, you know, the extra effort and the time and the money into, even though you barely ever see it, it's just a nice touch to have the back of the board look like something like this. And when you flip it over, it is a beautiful, humongous, vibrant, colorful board. And just to show you how much bigger it is than a standard Ticket to Ride board that you'd buy in the store. Now, obviously this is the USA version, but the Europe standard version is the same size. You could see how much larger this board is. And you'll see lots of detailed images and illustrations in between the cities in this game. It just makes it so much more interesting than the standard board. And here you can see all sorts of other illustrations as well. It's just beautiful. So that's pretty much on the production of the game. Let's talk a little bit about the mechanisms that are different for Europe. If you're already familiar with Ticket to Ride Europe, 
These are all the same from the from you know the standard version of Ticket to Ride Europe. You can fast forward, hit the uh, timestamp below to go right to the, my final thoughts. But for those that aren't familiar with the Europe version, let me show you what's different about this. This is where ferries were introduced in Ticket to Ride Europe. And here you'll see a locomotive because these are gonna go over like water areas. And to go here, you'd use the gray as normal, all of one color, but they, you know, they could be any color, but all of one color. But sometimes you have to use wild. Like this one has to be a wild and then three of any color. You can also use wilds here if you want to. This needs at least two wilds and, and the rest have to be all the same color and or wild. So those are ferries that were new here and they've used them in other versions since this. The next mechanism are tunnels and you'll see that some of them don't look like the standard rectangles. They sort of have a diamond shape and they're outlined quite dark and there's a lot of them on here. Now when you go to tunnels, let's say we were going to build from here to here, we would throw down two pinks there or purples, whatever you want to call them. And then regardless of how long it was, you would flip three cards off the top of the deck. And if any of those cards are either wild or the color that was here for each one of those, you'd have to come up with another card of this color or wild. And if you don't or can't, then your turn ends, you take the cards back, the two that you were playing to get this, and your turn ends, you could try next turn, or you could try to get more cards of this color and or wild to try to, you know, to get there on a, on a future turn. So it's kind of a press your luck, you're not sure how long the tunnels are gonna be until you're in them, and that's kind of thematic. Now in the original Ticket to Ride, the longest route was six for 15 points, here's a route of eight for 21 points. Now, the last aspect are stations. Now, let's say this is us, we're the logs, and we're trying to get to here. Now, look, we're blocked here, but we've got a root here. We're blocked here, but we've got that root there. On your turn, for your turn, for your first station, you can spend one card of any type, and you can place this on any city that doesn't have a station. So we'll place it here. Now, later on, you can place a second station for two cards of the same color, and your last station, the third one, three cards of the same color, always in a place that doesn't have a station. But that's your turn. But at the end of the game, you're going to take this and you could place it on a route that's adjacent to that city. So something like this. So now this allows us to use this player's route to get to here. However, it does come at a cost because every one of these that you don't use at the end of the game is worth four points. So essentially it's costing you a turn, some cards, and four points to place one. But if this ticket was more than four points, it's probably worth your while. That's pretty much Ticket to Ride Europe 15th Anniversary. All right, I've got to start this by saying, if you haven't watched my videos before, I love Ticket to Ride, just the original game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. It is the modern classic of all modern classics. I've seen more new people get into the hobby of board gaming due to Ticket to Ride, and I've never seen the game fail. So I love it. So that's my bias coming in is I love the original. What do I think about this? This is absolutely a grandiose version, and it definitely will turn heads. You're going to be playing this. Uh, and people are gonna stop by, wow, look at all those tins and all those trains and look at that board, it's so big and so colorful. It will turn heads, this is grandiose. It is the same treatment that the 10th anniversary USA edition got, which was amazing. And I remember when it, that first came out and I, I was at Gamma, the Gamma trade show, and I saw that 10th anniversary edition in, in person like months before it came out. And I was just going gaga, taking pictures like crazy. And yes, I bought that for $99 retail, and it's still probably the best $99 I've ever spent in board gaming because that is my favorite, literally my favorite sort of game encapsulated in my entire gaming library. And I just love it because it just, the treatment that it gave this great game is awesome. And this got the same one. They did it the 15th instead of the 10th, but I'm glad that they gave this treatment to this because you know what? So many people play the 10th anniversary edition that I got for Ticket to Ride, and they're like, where can I get this version? Unfortunately, you can't get that thing anywhere. You know, these are limited print runs. They're doing them once, uh, and, and then they're gone. So this is one of those ones. Don't, don't, don't slouch. If you think you're going to get this, want this thing at all, get it, because it's not going to last long. Now, this is beautiful trains. I mean, all the different trains that are in there, I'll talk about one of them that I didn't like as much in a little bit, but just in general speaking, the trains are bigger, they're, they're, they're just, they're cool. The logs and the, the metal, the, the, sort of the metal wire and such. Uh, the cars on there, so cool. It actually, I think the cars were in like the tick, the, the train cards from the 10th anniversary edition and they put, actually put them on the trains in the Europe edition, that was kind of cool. And the tins that they come in, it's just beautiful production. It's, it's just awesome. Uh, the art and the detail in the board, like just like in the, the 10th anniversary edition for the, the, for the USA, 
you know, unlike the, the, the main board, which is, you know, the regular size board, it's smaller, but it's a little more sort of grayish colors in the background. Where this has vibrant colors. They pop off the board and you see all these little details in and around the different cities and such. And I love that aspect of this. And I love how big the board is. It's awesome. You fold this thing out, people are like, whoa, this is a big board. Like it's, it's great. I just, I, I love this. I love everything about this edition. Um, just like the other 10th uh, anniversary, they gave pretty much all the expanded tickets. So there was, for the original USA, there was a 1910 expansion, and for the Europe version, there was the 1912 Europa expansion. And that came with the full side cards, and it came with all these extra types of tickets. And I'm glad that they did that here too. So now you have way more tickets in the base game. You have pretty much all the tickets that were ever made, and you can decide they have many variants. You can play the basic, you can play the big cities, you can play uh, the mega, which is putting them all together all different ways to play the variants and i like that you can decide i don't know why you wouldn't just throw them all in and play the mega that's my favorite way to play but at least they give you different ways to play if you didn't want to do that uh, the larger cards this can't be understated i can't tell you how many times you know you play ticket to ride with people for the first time and they just love the game and they're like i wish these cards were a little bigger you know it's like the number one complaint but in order to keep the game at the cost that it's at in the stores and mass market and such They've got to do that, right? So, but for here, they get the good treatment of the larger cards. They're so much more easy to shuffle. They're so much more beautiful. It really does. You don't think going from the little small mini cards to the big cards, eh, okay, bigger cards, whatever. No, it really improves the experience so much so that like the 1910 expansion that comes with the bigger cards for the USA has been like out of print for like over a year now. And I hope they bring that back. Days of Wonder, if you're listening, please bring back the 1910 expansion. We want that. Uh, so the larger cards doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it really does improve the experience so, so, so much. So that's enough on the sort of the production side of things. Now for the Europe, if you haven't played Europe before, I showed you the, the mechanisms there, the ferries, the stations, the tunnels. The ferries are cool. I like that aspect. The wilds that have to go on there and then the rest of them are gray routes. The tunnels, some people might not like this, that press your luck aspect where like if you try to go and you get stuck, you might even have like one extra card and like two might show up and you're like, really? And now everyone knows where you're going to go and someone else might go there and like steal it from you. Some people won't like that. I don't mind it. It is it is what it is. You know the rules. Everyone's playing by the same rules going in. It gives it a little twist. Uh, it's okay. I don't mind it. Uh, some people don't like that. The stations. I've kind of flip-flopped a little bit on this. When I first played the stations, I was like, you know what? Part of my favorite thing about Ticket to Ride, the original, is the blocking people. Like, it's it's kind of vicious. It's fun to block people. Uh, and with the stations, it kind of gives you an out. It's a little more family friendly. It's like, well, you know what? I got blocked. Well, I'll just use a station. Sure, it cost me four points at the end of the game, but at least I can get around that. But the more and more I've played it, and especially recently with this version, I've really noted, no notated that even though you can put a station and sort of not get blocked, it doesn't always work because a lot of times you'll get blocked in a, at a, from a route and it's not necessarily like you just needed to get to that next city. A lot of times it's like, wow, I'm blocked. I, that was like the only real way to get to way over there and that little choke spot got blocked and now I gotta go all the way around and the station doesn't really help you out there. So it can help you, but it doesn't always help you. But I like that you're always playing with four points because each of them that you keep is four points at the end. So it's, it's a good decision tree. So I've sort of changed a little bit more on the stations. I like them more than I used to. So overall, you know, it's a different twist than, than the you know, new mechanisms, different twists from the original. If you've played the original and you really like it, give this one a shot. Absolutely get this one because it's, you know, just because it's the grandiose version, but you'll also like, you know, probably like some of these mechanisms too. Now, on the no game is perfect on the negative side of things. So when they came out with the 10th anniversary edition of the USA version, the trains were amazing. And, but like two of the five were just kind of like, okay. They had like these, these huge barrels that were cool. They had coal. My favorite of all had the, like the carnival one with like the giraffe's head hanging out. That's the best one. But like the green and the blues in the original 10th anniversary was like, eh, okay. Yeah, sure. They're big. Sure. They're painted. Sure. They're okay. But they're not like special like these other ones. And I always wish they had done that. Now in this one, four of the five are really cool and different, right? One of the five, the red postal is like, eh, okay, it's a train. It says postal on it. It looks like a train. I really wish they would have found another way to make all five of them just look very unique and special and have something different about them, different, different ways to look at them where it doesn't necessarily just look just like a train. 
So when I play this version, I'm actually taking the red ones from the 10th anniversary edition with the giraffe head and replacing the red ones here. And I'm gonna use that tin when I play this version. And if I'm playing the USA version, I really wanna play green or blue, ah, I'll grab the cars, the blue one from the Europe version and bring those over. So luckily I've got those, uh, both of them, but I wish they would have made the red one a little bit cooler looking. Uh, now, th the other thing is for those that live in Europe or know the geography really well, you'll be fine. What I found is with all Ticket to Ride maps that aren't in the place that people are from, it's a harder and it's a struggle because A, they don't know the geography, and B, uh, you know, in this one, now the cards themselves, again, they're bigger, even the ticket cards, and you can see the cities on there, and they do a really good job of putting on the map where those cities are, and even on this one, they actually show the colors of the routes that are connecting those. So you can actually even, like, without even looking at the board, you can kind of, like, just look at your ticket card, look at your train cards, and go, Okay, yeah, I can do this. They did a really good job. Graphic design is great on this. But it doesn't make it easier for people, you know, we, uh, me, my family, my friends, and I found a lot of people that live in the United States tend to be somewhat geographically, geographically challenged. Meaning that, like, we don't really know a lot of geography, at least me and my family and my friends, uh, of other places. And when we play Ticket to Ride maps with other places, it just is harder. Even though the cards are well done, it's just harder to do it. And especially with this, where they're using a lot of like the old city names that you're not as familiar with, it just takes longer to figure out where they're at. It takes longer to, to just think. It's one more thing. You have to like think about the geography where in the United States version, if that's where you're from, you don't really have to think geography. You just think strategy. Where in the, if you go to a different map, you got to think strategy, new mechanisms, and I'm unfamiliar with the geography as much, and I have to think of that. So it's always a little bit harder, and it, it, it just is what it is. But it doesn't stop me from loving the game. This is absolutely, hands down, amazing. Again, for so many people that missed the 10th anniversary edition of the USA, it came and went. It sells for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on eBay. Don't let that happen to you with this. Get this version. It's unbelievable. Ticket to Ride Europe, 15th anniversary edition. Now, because of this, of course I'm keeping this game. And when I do that in a review, I give it a saxophone serenade. So right at the end of this, I'm going to jam on my saxophone for this game. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love. Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, it's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below. Here today we're going all over Europe in trains. We're gonna be going to all the different. Uh, what? <laughs> Hello. Uh, really? First word. Each player is gonna take this and place it on a route that's adjacent to this city. So I might go like this because now this means. Oops! I just dropped. No. Sh